Today we are starting at the launch pad and the lift off of the space shuttle carrying the first segment of the space station project to orbit. And hi and welcome to today's KSP2 video where we are actually starting at the launch pad as I think me building the shuttle for about I'd say a week <laughs> wouldn't really be uh, good to watch for you. Oh, the the go the SRBs. Um, it did actually take me a week to come up with the proper design, the the orbiter itself and the SRBs. So the main problem was with the SRBs, of course, the <laughs> external fuel tank would explode on SRB separation. And you can see me actually fighting the shuttle so it doesn't flip over. Because it, it would happily flip over and... I mean, my yaw and my roll were mixed up and they were kinda counteracting each other and I couldn't necessarily steer one direction or the other. It would mix both of them up and introduce some uh, roll into a yaw and some yaw into roll, so it wasn't as easy. And he actually saw me pumping fuel into the uh, fuel tank aboard the shuttle, because even though I have the fuel line attached, actually two fuel lines attached to the orange tank, oh yeah, there's, there goes the flip. <laughs> I'm transferring the fuel again, huh, okay. Even though I have the fuel lines attached, uh, it doesn't actually feed the fuel into the tank and into the engines, it goes straight into the engines for some reason. So yeah, I'm going for uh, pretty much Methalox as my orbiting maneuvering uh, system fuel, because uh, monopropellant is just not powerful enough, it doesn't provide as much uh, thrust and I couldn't pretty much be bothered. But we are in orbit already. There's gonna be three shuttles. You're gonna see three landings, but only one launch as it, it would like the video would be over an hour long, which is less than ideal, I'd say. But here it is the first uh, stage of the space station. We are actually starting with the solar panels and some crew cabin. We're not starting with the core because I wanted to get the solar panels into orbit so I didn't have to use RTGs. And surprisingly, uh, getting the cargo out of the cargo bay went smoother than I thought. And I just want to say I love the view of the NASA Space Shuttle with the planet Earth or Caribbean, in this case, beneath. And here we go, we have the ginormous solar panels deployed and this station would technically be functional but we are not stopping here now we just have to deorbit the shuttle and land it at the ksc now we're gonna encounter the first glitch of this series and yeah you see me deorbiting kind of aiming in between the island and the ksc there can probably tell where I'm aiming if you want to land the shuttle yourself it's pretty accurate but yeah now you're gonna see my station is on a collision course with Kerbin and I know why that uh, is the case it happens because I time warped when burning my engines so I had to reload a quick save and reloading said quick save actually fixed the issue for the time being only because <laughs> I can't time warp whatsoever. I have to do it in real time, but there's also another solution. You basically just have to switch to the station or add any other craft you have in orbit and then switch back to your orbiter or another spacecraft you want to deorbit or change its orbit. It will basically keep your uh, craft in orbit in somewhat stable orbit. It still may be affected by the SAS. So make sure you turn the SAS off, in this case, on the station. But now we are coming in for a landing, which is, I'd say, kind of beautiful, but a little bit bumpy at the end. You're just gonna see. This one was actually done in one try, <laughs> which cannot be said about the other two you're gonna see. But it went surprisingly smooth. You can see me actually slowing down time warp now. For you guys 
so you can experience the landing with me somewhere in real time. It looks like it's gonna go smooth, but we gonna bounce off the runway any second now. Rear wheels are about to touch the ground. And there we go. We kinda went back up into the air, but it was way better than crashing into the concrete, correct? So now we can just deploy the jog chute and coast our way down the runway a little bit quicker this time. And we will be able to finally stop in just a second. I didn't want to force the brakes. The runway is very, very long, so there's no point wasting the brakes away. I'm gonna repack the chute and get back to our station, see what's going on. The orbit is stable, we're just gonna have to make some corrections. That was done off screen. And we are now in space with the second space shuttle and the second cargo. And that cargo is actually the main core, kinda and somewhat like a Russian module with Soyuz docking ports. So basically just uh, junior docking ports allowing me to later on explore an idea of launching Soyuz into space and docking the Soyuz spacecraft into the station. As my Soyuz version uses a junior docking port because it actually fits perfectly at the top. And now we skipped ahead and we are right by the station so we can deploy the cargo i actually decided to kind of cut the video a little bit because everybody knows how to run the vo at this point with ksp1 being out for so many years we just burn towards target and retrograde relative to target and so on and so forth until you get close enough i didn't really want to approach <laughs> the station in ksp2 yet with the whole shuttle just in case it decides to collide with it or randomly change its orbit for no apparent reason. I'd rather just cause the uh, core module and somewhat the Russian module towards the space station. I apologize if the video seems quite chaotic, but there's a lot of things going on at once on screen. There's one shuttle after the other after the other. We have a lot of things to dock to the station. Even though the station is going to be a little smaller, but that opens a gate to future upgrades, be it with shuttles, with Starship, Soyuz, or maybe a Cygnus craft in the future, or maybe even Progress, who knows. I mean, it depends mostly on you guys, uh, my viewers, uh, what's gonna happen next. And I'm just hoping we can keep the station up in orbit and I don't randomly just deorbit it or the save file doesn't break. I mean, if it does, I can probably just get it back into orbit pretty easily without recording all of that. But yeah, we are lined up with the station. We can just point two craft together because these are basically separate craft right now, merging into one spacecraft which is going to be a fully functional station. Now, uh, we can get our carrier balls on EVA as I do not want to attempt the docking into one of these ports. We are in fact going to bring in an extension port for the, the shuttle docking, but we're gonna guys see that a little bit later in the video. And now we can reconfigure the station and place our quote-unquote Russian module with the junior docking ports docked to the side allowing easier Soyuz spacecraft docking and basically making more space <laughs> on the space station. <laughs> I didn't initially think it will be any sort of challenge to dock anything like that, but I kinda messed up the approach and now <laughs> you can see me drifting kinda to the side and then drifting away from the docking port, so I had to reconfigure a little bit and get my SAS on and basically point towards target. Now we can just go into the comments and laugh at my lack of skill at reconfiguring things. I will also be unable to dock the space shuttle into the station later on. And spoiler alert, we didn't get the extension attached. But that's for later. Now we have to deorbit the second shuttle without uh, yeah, deorbiting the station, <laughs> and here was the glitch again. <laughs> we basically sh caused the 
station orbit apogee to shoot up really really high and the perigee uh, just sunk into the planet because the whole orbit basically moves away from Kerbin. I have no idea why that's the case, but I know the fix. I shared the fix and I hope it will make your guys' life a little bit easier in KSP. Now you can see me kind of plotting the maneuver node again or actually just executing the deorbit burn again because I think I either screwed up the <laughs> non-time warping thing or I was controlling the shuttle from the docking port on top of the shuttle kind of towards forward and it might be the one or the other, I'm not sure at this point. But both things happened, I, I'm not perfect, okay? <laughs> but what is perfect is my shuttle landings. This one took quite a bit of tries and it was basically trial and error and it was just me reconfiguring uh, lifting surfaces because I forgot to do that before launch. So we are just keeping the tail fin as my yaw axis so it doesn't really spin out in the atmosphere even though it wouldn't because I landed without reconfiguring anything and it was fine. But now we are heading for the runway. There is a fair amount of cuts. I hope you are not too bothered with that. Oh yeah, there's a special camera for you guys. <laughs> we are aiming uh, for the left runway right now. Just to change things up a bit. And just a small pitch up at the end and we can safely land the shuttle. That was actually a nice landing. Except for the front wheel suspension kind of acting up, which is sadly normal. I ultimately wanted to make this video a little bit shorter than it was. Uh, this is my rough cut where everything was basically put together. was over half an hour. It was closing on 40 minutes, I believe. And we are below 18 minutes currently. So I hope that's fine with you, but I still want to to keep my space shuttle landings somewhat slower and still include the runway coasting as I love the view of the shuttle as much as I love the, the sun hiding behind Kerbinder. <laughs> now we are in the middle of our third and last mission with a double payload actually. This is our other solar panel that will connect to the side of the station Kinda of creating the uh, TIE Fighter vibe from Star Wars and for the record I wasn't even planning on that. But what I was also wasn't planning for was me not being able to detach the shuttle docking extension <laughs> from the aft of the cargo bay aboard the shuttle and that single piece caused so many problems with the mission as you can see, both of our craft and the shuttle and the station basically just fell back to Kerbin. I have no idea why. It just did. Now, we can safely coast our <laughs> last piece of the station and kind of position it correctly. So both uh, sides look somewhat similar and I just realized I misplaced the left side panel and it's kind of more towards the center than the outside of the station uh, which is fine I guess uh, we can deal with that later if we get any update that will actually allow our kerbals to I, I don't know change stuff like it was uh, in KSP-1 where you could reconfigure things in orbit with your kerbals and we actually brought some more crew with us I actually forgot it was a crewed mission that I had a goal of leaving some more crew members on board the space station so now the probably most fun part for me in the entire thing the landing this one is going to be different as well 
because we are kind of going for that more NASA space shuttle approach where you go past the landing uh, site, the runway, then you make 180 and then you land. It took me probably five tries to get it right, but we ultimately made it. Since we have our deorbit burn probably finalized, yeah, it's finalized. There won't be any corrections, except for that long list of unpaused and quick load. <laughs> now it's all fine. I just switched to the station and back to the shuttle so I can actually time warp. Uh, yeah, the development process or the engineering process, it was tiring to say the least. As I said before, it took me a week to come up with a working design that both goes into orbit and flies back, or basically just glides back. And by the way, this one is gliding perfectly. You are welcome to copy the design, you don't have to shout me out, nothing, just look at what I did. If you want a working shuttle, just follow along. I know I didn't make the time-lapse build, but it should be easy enough to replicate when you look at the shape of the wings and stuff and how the mass is distributed. Okay, that might be a bit tougher part, but there's a fuel tank at the forward section of the cargo bay uh, where the attachment node port is for cargo and basically my lift uh, vector is in, in front. No, it's behind mass, of course. So that's my 180 maneuver and there was a cut there, but other than that it is actually a nice landing as well. This is one of the craft that I'm actually not gonna share a craft file with anyone because I want you guys to build your own space shuttle. It is so extremely rewarding. When it goes up, it goes down in one piece and that feeling when you can say, I did it. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I shall see you in the next one. Bye.